most common is probably vinyl. Okay? So a vinyl paper is basically, it's a plastic face with a paper back. It's relatively easy to hang because it's quite tough and it's relatively easy to strip because what happens is you strip the plastic face off, it leaves the paper back in, then you just wet the paper back in and that comes off relatively easy. So I mean I could strip a wallpapered room probably in the morning. So it doesn't have to take that long to strip the wallpaper off. Now for commercial purposes, you can actually get wide vinyl. So you can get sort of, you can get it in rolls that are sort of like this wide. And that generally in the UK, that will be used on commercial properties. So banks, offices, that kind of thing, because it's hard wearing, it's really durable. Um, you, you actually sort of, what's called splice the joints so the joints are relatively invisible um, so but that's more of a commercial type paper it's basically the same but just sort of on a bigger scale now you can get obviously wallpaper you can get paper so it's actually it is paper so they've printed the design onto paper these are quite difficult to handle because what happens is when you paste the paper it starts to become more and more delicate so after five minutes, it's soft and playable. After 10 minutes, it's very playable. And after 15 minutes, it starts to tear. Um, and the other thing about papers is sometimes the inks aren't quite as stable on the face as they could be. And if you get a little bit of paste on it, it can start to um, stain, really. You'll get staining on the face of the paper. So papers can be a little bit more difficult to handle. Something that's relatively sort of new to the market but it's getting bigger and bigger, especially in the UK, is something called a non-woven. And what that basically is, it's sort of like, um, it's, it's like a plastic, if you will, rather than a paper. And what that means is, it doesn't need to soak, it doesn't need to stretch, which means you can paste the wall instead of pasting the back of the paper. And that makes it a lot easier to hang because the paper's dry, it's light, it's not messy. You just paste the area of the wall that you obviously that you're working on, you put it on the wall, you trim it. It's ni quite nice to handle. Now the, the others, has anyone ever used this peel and stick? It can be quite tricky because it, you can't move it about on the wall. Like normal wallpaper, you can put it on the wall, you can move it into position and then you can trim it. With the peel and stick, it's like Oh shit, it's not straight. <laughs> so, it can be quite tricky. Your more specialist papers, like your grass cloths, metallics, hessian, things like that. Personally, I would get a bit of experience wallpapering before I started using the more advanced papers. Work your way up to the more advanced papers. So that's just a little bit of background on the different types of paper. Let's just talk about the wall that you're working on. So basically what you're going to be doing, obviously you're going to be sticking a piece of paper to a wall. And the wall can be in various sort of states before you start papering. Um, and there's basically two sort of extreme uh, states that the wall can be. It can be basically porous all the way across to like um, let's, let's call it sealed or non-porous. So a porous surface would be something that's just new plaster or, or, or uh, yeah, new plaster. So it's very, very absorbent. Drywall. Yeah, drywall. So it's very absorbent. So if you were painting it, you'd have to seal it with a drywall primer to sort of satisfy that porosity, you know, so that the paint will take. Well, it's the same with the wallpaper. And the other end of the scale, you could have a wall that's completely sealed. So it's like got 10 coats of gloss on it or something, and it's, it's completely sealed. It's really smooth, it's really sealed. Both those extremes are difficult to get wallpaper to stick to. So you've obviously, you've got to handle that before you start wallpapering. So for a, a porous surface, what you would do with that is, you would seal it, and you would use what's called a wallpaper size. And what size is, it's basically like a, 
a wallpaper primer for porous walls. And you just, you mix it up in a bucket with water, you, you brush it on and it seals the wall. But what most decorators do these days is they just use the adhesive that they're going to use for the wallpaper, they thin it down so that it soaks into the wall and they'll use that to sort of satisfy the porosity of the wall. So they'll use thin down paste. The problem is with a porous wall, you paste the paper, you put it on the wall and two things happen. First of all, it's like, it won't move. It's like a sticker. And second thing is all the paste that you've put on that paper just soaks into the wall. So you're losing all that adhesion and then the edges start peeling and it, you know, it'll fall off again. So that, that's why you've got to seal it. So sometimes you might have to give it a couple of coats of size. It depends how porous the wall is. Just use your judgment. So like with this wall, for example, has been painted and we sized it last night just to make sure that it was completely sealed. If you've got the opposite and you've got a completely sealed surface, then that, that can be difficult to get the paper to stick to as well. So what you would do in that situation, you'd use something called a lining paper. So you can buy a lining paper, which is just, it's a, just a paper, it's got no pattern on it, it comes in various thicknesses, which are called grades. Um, so you can get typically from a, an 800 grade to something that's really thick, like a 2000 grade. Uh, and typically in the UK, most people will use something like a thousand, which is, it's relatively thick, but it's not like cardboard. And what you would do with that is you would stick it on to the sealed surface, horizontally, so opposite to the way that you're gonna wallpaper, and you'd use a, a ready mixed adhesive. I'm gonna talk about adhesives in a bit, so we'll come back to that. So you'd stick lining paper on with a ready mix, so you'd abrade the surface, so sand it to give it a bit of a key, and then you'd use a, a lining paper with a ready mix adhesive, you stick it on horizontally, let that dry, and then you've got a perfect surface then to wallpaper onto. It does hide some imperfections as well, but its main purpose is to even out the porosity of the wall because that's what wallpaper struggles with. If it's too porous or it's not porous enough, it struggles. Lining paper evens that out and it gives you a perfect surface to wallpaper onto. And if you have a bump in the wallpaper, the lining paper sort of goes up, it, it doesn't necessarily hide it. If the wall is plasterboard and taped and jointed, they'll, they'll seal the wall and then they'll put lining paper on. So it acts like a sort of like a skim coat almost, and then they'll wallpaper it. What tends to happen with a, a really sealed surface, when it dries out, all the joints split and they open up ever so slightly, and you end up with loads of lines. And the lining paper, it doesn't matter if the lining paper splits, because it's underneath what the finished paper is going to be. But then the generally you go in the opposite direction that you're going to wallpaper. So if you're going to, you generally wallpaper vertically. Some people, if they want to stripe, they'll put it on horizontally, but generally you wallpaper vertically. So if that's the case, you would line horizontally. You'd have to read the label on the wallpaper, see what it recommended. And if it recommended that you line it, then you would have to line it. If, and if it, it, obviously, it didn't recommend you lined it, but your wall's not great, then I'd line it. 